Me and you, we about to, uh, here we go again. Get fluxed up. Welcome to another episode of Glaze Review, where I take a glaze off of the shelf, I test it, usually in cone 5-6 oxidation, and I show you what it comes out as. That way you don't have to do the footwork before wondering what stuff comes out as before you buy it on the shelf. But Dante, there's already a test dial on the, on the front. It shows you exactly what it comes out as. You, look, listen, listen here. You and I both know, after a years and years worth of experience, it does not always come out as it says it will on the bottle. It's, it's, I'm not saying the companies are lying to us. I'm just saying there's some user error maybe, but it, it don't be coming out like this all the time. And my job is to suss those out. You sussy, sussy baka. baka. In today's video, we are testing out Mako Flux. It is a stoneware glaze. I assume by this, they mean that they would like for me to use it on stoneware instead of porcelain. That means that I haven't talked to the company, but it doesn't matter because we're testing them on stoneware anyway. Its serial number is SW-401, and I believe its darker brother is SW-402, which is called Dark Flux. I assume these are the same base. I have both of them, and you will probably get both videos sometime soon. I want to see if there's a difference in either one. That being said, in today's video, we are testing it on a stoneware clay body. This is B-Mix with Grog. It has a lot of texture on it. This was actually one of my good mugs. Generally speaking, I like to get a mug that I'm not too fond of, like like this right here. Looks like a, looks like a, a snowman decided to become ceramic. I don't know. It looks like a business person forgot their overcoat and they just went to work in like their undershirt, you know, with the pits, with the sweaty pit stains. But this one here was actually meant to be pretty good. So we're going to be testing these on number one, a bee mix with grog stoneware body and number two, a redstone clay body with the three little slip dots on it. And we're going to see how this glaze comes out today. Full disclosure here, usually I try and open a brand new bottle of these types of glazes. So that way when I open it like this, you can see the seal's not broken yet. You'll probably see it in other videos if you watch other glaze reviews. But this one, I had to reconstitute because it has been in the bottle so long, it was pure rock. I'm pretty sure I got the specific gravity right. I even weighed it out myself. It's around 1.3 to 1.4. You know, now that I'm using this glaze and I see how it flows on the clay body, I'm actually pretty happy with the consistency of how thick this glaze is that I got here. Like I put it in the blender, I added water to it, and I was like, oh, I can probably get back to where it normally should be as a glaze. And I'm, I think I did a great job, to be honest with you. I'm pretty happy with it. Ah, but Dante, now the test results are gonna be off, because I don't know how, many, how much water you added. Look, I added, number one, the right amount of water, and number two, do you want a glaze review or do you want no glaze review? Huh? You tell me in the comments below. You, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I didn't even let you comment. I just, I know you agree with me, so yeah. Okay, so as we usually do, we're gonna review these two cups before we put them in the oxidation kiln. This one over here is a stoneware clay body. This is red stone. It has very fine grog in it. So it's not really a groggy clay body, but it is a stoneware clay body still. This is the base glaze on this cup. It has nothing else on it or over it. This over here is a stoneware clay body. This is B mix with grog. This is our white clay body to contrast to our darker redstone clay body. I really wanna see how this one comes out because this one has the most texture on it. This was a mug that I made with the intention of uh, selling on my website, earthnationceramics.com instead of just like making stuff and seeing if I can use it for experiments later. In fact, if you would like to see it, I have an entire shelf of stuff here, but that one up there is my tester shelf. Just like me, stuff that I don't I like that I want to test one, stuff two, three, on. Help. So I really hope this one comes out okay because I kind of like it. But with that being said, let's put these two in the kiln. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. This is Mako Flux SW401 on a white B mix clay body. Th 
this is pretty excellent to be honest with you. I really enjoy this glaze. My main issue with it, of course, and if you've been watching my glaze review videos for quite some time, you'll know that I am a stickler for representation. I hate it when companies put a picture on the bottle that has nothing to do with the representation of the glaze, especially when I've tested it multiple times on multiple different clay bodies. So this, to me, looks nothing like this. This would lead me to believe that this was a red glaze, and this, as well as some other testers that I did, do not lead to that conclusion at all. You can see right here on the lip, there's a bit of texture as far as the glaze depth goes, but that's not enough to make me think like, oh, it possibly could have turned out red. No, there's, there's no dimension in which I would have thought this would ever come out red. The entirety of it is almost kind of an iridescent white. Although I do like it, it looks very similar to my Lumos glaze that I hand make myself. But, you know, I made the glaze because I like this type of color and texture and depth of glaze. So, like, of course I like this. The really surprising thing is how it came out on a red clay body. It's actually really beautiful on a red clay body. I like this way more than I like this. And just look at the difference in between the two different clay bodies. This is a redstone clay body, and this is just a regular old B-mix clay body, right? And look, look at the difference. It's completely different color patterns, completely different variation of opacity, completely different texture. There's even, if I think I can see it, there's little tiny crystals that look like they were forming inside of this glaze matrix. Granted, I don't know the recipe to this glaze because I don't know the company's recipe, but if I were to fire this a different way, I bet I could get some micro crystals in here. That being said, of course, this is the exact reason why we do glaze reviews is because this and this look nothing like this. And just as a little sneak peek into my own little process for whoever knows how to make glazes, the reason why I do testing on white clay and brown clay is because brown or red clay generally has more, way more iron in it, if any at all, than a white clay body does. So in my mind, I'm essentially treating this glaze as if it was this glaze with just a smidge of iron in it. You know, I don't know the exact percentage. I don't know if it's 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, but I do know that this glaze would pretty much turn into this if I just added iron to it. But Generally speaking, companies don't like when I mess with their glazes. This flippin' Earth Nation kid is over here developing glazes and, and adding stuff to our glazes. And he's, uh, yeah, he's in his garage. Kill him. Kill him. I want him dead. I want him dead. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for reviewing SW-401 Mako Flux from the Stoneware Glaze line from Mako. I really appreciate you joining me. You know, I actually really enjoy this glaze. What I don't enjoy, though, is the fact that I've, I've tested it. I tested it on a third piece which died in the kiln, technically. I don't want to show it to you, but it did come out with this extra white. I tested it on a porcelain textile, and it pretty much came out like this. I didn't test it on a second brown, but I kind of wish I did. But with three textiles under my belt coming out with different results than what is on the bottle, I, I just have a pet peeve about companies putting this color on here. Because, in a little rant, a little rant for you, what realistically happens, and this even happens in the glaze chemistry world for people who make their own glazes, they will make a hundred test styles, right? And they'll pick the best one, and that's the picture they'll show you. But of course, that's the most rare, and that's the most special one that came out in the entire batch. I don't like that. I want to see the most average circumstance that'll happen with your glazes at a time. So I try really hard whenever I put my pictures up to not modify them. I try really hard to just put the most average one out. If I test 10 and there's one out of 10 and there's like a five out of 10 or a one out of five, I want to show you the worst, the best and the middle ground of all of those results. And I find that glaze companies, to their benefit, to make you buy the glaze, will show you the best version of all of their tests that they have on the best clay bodies and the best this and the best optics and all that. But the high majority of companies will show their best representation for their product on the shelves in order to get you to buy something. To their benefit, of course. But this is one of the reasons why this glaze review video exists, is because this happens all the time, and then it turns into this. 
Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, remember to click the like button and leave a comment down below on what you think I should test for the next Glaze review. Um, I, I don't know what you should comment down below. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can comment pee pee poo poo for all I care, as long as it feeds the algorithm so YouTube doesn't beat me senseless. Thank you for your patronage.